Well, thank y'all for uh, being able to be here. Thank the Lord for saving me. And uh, what I put upon my heart is in John 11, and it's a very familiar scripture, it's about Lazarus. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, if you're here and you're lost, you need Christ. And if you're here and you're saved, you still need Christ. And as we look at what the Word tells each and every one of us, we understand that uh, we can't make it another day without Him. We may make it in this world, but we're looking for a world to come. We're looking for something that's greater than this world. And His name is Jesus Christ. Knowing that, we need to have our armor on, be ready to rope with righteousness. Uh, what the Lord put on me, that you know, the Word of God is spiritual. We look at it sometimes being carnal, and it does have carnal play in it, but uh, He said you have to worship me in spirit and in truth. Spirit being the Holy Spirit and the truth being Jesus Christ. The only way we worship the Father. And we look at what the Word of God says. We talked about there in, in 11 there in, in John. It's about Lazarus. And whenever Lazarus was there, you know, and, and uh, he'd pass on. And they sent word to Christ. He was down there. And they sent word to Christ telling him that the one he loved, this Lazarus, was, 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 was dead. And he was sick. And so he stayed there two more days. And the disciples was there. And the Lord said, this sickness isn't to, to death, but it's for the glory of God. And so the disciples were there with him. And so they go on back up. And he starts going in where, where Lazarus is. And uh, the, what Mary and Martha are there. You know, it's Lazarus' sister. And the Lord tells us right there in his word that he loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus. You know, he doesn't love them any more than he loves me. And he doesn't love me any more than he loves them. Thank God that he loves all of us the same. He doesn't have a set of people over here who loves more than anyone else. But he loves all of us the same. Because we know the things that the Lord has put upon our hearts. We know that we can stand firmly on the word of God knowing that whenever the trials and problems and, and things come upon us, we know that we can stand and what is going to be there for us, this man named Jesus Christ will deliver us from ourselves, will deliver us from this evil world, and he will show us the way. He said that I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Knowing those things are upon us, we can stand boldly on the path of righteousness, which is Jesus Christ. And Lazarus is there, and you know, Lazarus has been put into the tomb, and Mary and Martha is there, and as she runs out, Martha runs out to him, I believe it was, and sees him, you know, and said, uh, you know, if you'd been here earlier, he doesn't stay there two extra days, been here earlier, my son hadn't died, you know. And he said, you know, you know your, 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 or your brother wouldn't have died. And said, well, you know, will he rise again? And she said, yeah, in her latest resurrection in the last days. But Christ tells her plainly, he said, I am the resurrection. And we know that as how, because whenever we got saved that day that we were sitting on the pew or wherever it was, driving down the road or whatever it was, we got saved, and the Lord put that resurrection on us. We had the same resurrection that Lazarus had, and when Christ, they put Christ in the tomb, he arose on that third appointed morning. Well, I had the same resurrection that Jesus Christ had, but I had a new life, right? The same one that Lazarus had. He was dead, but he wasn't unto death. He was for the glory of God. And the glory of God is whenever we get saved and we take and stand up for this man named Jesus Christ, knowing that he's the way, the truth, and the life, knowing that he can deliver us, and knowing that we can stand boldly, knowing that the problems or trials are going to be there. This world will tell us that there's another way. The world will preach and teach that there's other things, and there's other ways to get into heaven. But he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody gets up to the Father except through by me. And Lazarus is there, right? He's laying in the tomb, and Christ goes up, and he weeps, because he knows, because he loved Lazarus. But whenever Christ, the Bible tells us that there's joy in heaven over one sinner getting saved, that's like when the 99 sheep are out in the field, they're already gathered up. You know, that what does the shepherd do? He goes out looking for the one that is lost. And I was that lost sheep there for a long time, for 30 some years. But thank God that Jesus Christ was still out there looking for me and knew exactly where I was and he knew I needed a Savior. But I didn't want to be saved at that time. But thank goodness that whatever he put upon my heart, he tightened it up so hard on me. I couldn't see any way out except to him by Jesus Christ. Christ. Knowing that, why did he do? Because he loved me. That's exactly why. And thank, and thank God that he did. But Lazarus is there laying in a tomb, right? He's there and they take him. Christ goes up and he tells him to lay, roll away the tomb. And the Bible tells him Christ is there. And Mary, I believe it was, tells him, said, uh, he said, surely he'd been there four days and surely he's stinking. And you know, we're not talking about the death stink. You know, right down the road, something get hit on the side of the road, it's going to stink up the whole thing around it. We're not talking about the, the physical stings. We're talking about the spiritual stings. And what is the spiritual sting? Is it sin? Whenever you look at sin, sin will make you stink. And Lazarus is laying there and he's dead. And Christ tells him, what does he do? He says, come forth. He says, Lazarus, come forth. And he called each and every one of her names that are called, that are saved. He said, Tim, come forth. Bill, whoever it is, he said, come forth. And we don't have the stench of death on us anymore because what? We're alive and forevermore knowing that the stink is not there. And he said, loose him. And the grave clothes was upon him. They laid old Lazarus in the tomb and put the grave clothes upon him. And when he comes up, he says, loose him. And that's the exact same 
same thing whenever I was sitting there in grave clothes whenever I was lost. I had the grave clothes upon my life. It was spiritual death. And whenever he said, loose him, I stepped out on Jesus Christ and I was saved in a moment of twinkling and I changed from here to there, not to take it into the spiritual, I mean in the spiritual, but not in the fleshly. But thank God that the spiritual man and the fleshly man battle each other. But the spiritual man has to be stronger because the spiritual man isn't strong enough to overcome the physical man. This world and ungodliness, the physical man is going to let it, what it's going to overpower him. But so how do we understand that? Because the Bible tells us we need to take it, understand, and make sure that we're strong. Have on the whole robe of righteousness. But as Lazarus gets up and he comes out, what is it? He's saved and he comes out and he's alive forevermore. And Ezekiel is there. Whenever Ezekiel was there in Ezekiel 37, he's looking down the valley of dry bones. And of Christ, the Lord is there with him. And he asked him, said, can these bones live? And Ezekiel tells him, said, yes, Father, if y'all now know us, they can. And he asks him again, can they live? And what does he do? He starts speaking. And the bones start coming together. We think about it as being bones like, you know, dinosaur bones back in the old days laying out there. But that's all what he's talking about. Brother mentioned a while ago about the churches. That's what he's talking about. A lot of churches are full of dry bones. And they're dead. They're not going to go anywhere. They're not going to come together as a unit. Because we've got to come together what? As one nation in one mind and one accord in Jesus Christ. You don't think of the world out here and the garbage and trash and these false teachings are not of one mind and one accord. Yes, they are, because they're trying to overpower Jesus Christ, trying to overpower the spirit of the word, but they're never going to win. It may look like that they won, but whenever Elijah was there, right, he felt like he was alone. But there's always a remnant. There's always a remnant that's going to stand on Jesus Christ. And don't you want to be part of that remnant that's going to stand at the end? Because we know that Christ is coming back because he promised that he's coming back. It's foretold from the beginning of time. And from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation, it's Jesus Christ. No other name entered in heaven whereby we must be saved. But at that valley of dry bones, they start to come together as Christ is there, right? They start to come together. They start to move. The sinews and the bones come together and they start forming. And that's how a church is. We need to come together with life in our bodies and come together and stand on Jesus Christ. We're not talking about this church or that church. We're talking about all the churches. The ones that believe in Jesus Christ. The ones that stand boldly on his word. So as he's talking there, right, the bones start to come together. They start coming feeling. But what? They have no breath in them. They're not alive. They're not alive, but the bones come together. And that's how it is in our churches. Lots of times it looks like we're working for the right thing. And the traditions that are garbage and trash that we allow to come into the church will drive us away, will pull us away. And whenever somebody walks in, let's say a, a, a prostitute or something, comes in the door, and she may not be dressed the way because that's what Mary was, right? Before she was saved by Jesus Christ. She may not be dressed the way that we think she should be dressed. But the laws of God do not apply to her. Neither indeed can. We need to bring her in and show her the love of Jesus Christ and let her see that Christ loves her through and by us. And let her stay and do what she needs to do. And if Christ saves her, she will change. Because not only her, but Christ will change her. So she'll be dressed different. She'll walk different and she'll talk different. If a coal miner comes in, we'll put him up front and say, come on in, brother. Even if he's dirty or whatever, that's okay. We'll take care of it. And we take and take what? We take and respect the person. And we can't do that as a Christian. we got to love everybody and let them come in and see the love of God in their heart. Knowing that, we take a what? We cannot turn her back on anybody. Knowing that whenever that lost person comes in, and it doesn't be sin is sin in God's eyes. There's no little sin or big sin because he says if I'm guilty of one sin, I'm guilty of all. I'm guilty of taking in what? A, 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 a fornication or, or lying or killing or whatever it is. If I'm guilty of one, I'm guilty of all. So there's no separation of sin. Sin is sin in God's eyes. And I can't let sin come into my heart and i got to take it and wash it out. The only way that I can wash it out is through and by what? Jesus Christ. And i got to take and come back and pray and ask him to help me. So as they're there at the Valley of Dry Bones and they're looking down and it's talking about the churches that have dried up. They're taking what? There's no life in them. But they do come together and they still don't have any life until what? He breathed the breath of life into their nostrils. And it's the same breath of life that he breathed into my nostrils whenever I got saved. And it's the same breath of life that he breathed into your nostrils when you got saved. The exact same breath. Because whenever the ark was there and Noah was there in the ark, it was shut up. The Bible tells us that God shut the door, right? It's a spiritual door. He shut that door. And if that door is shut, nobody can open it. You can't shut it and you can't open it. It can only be shut or closed through and by Jesus Christ, through our Lord. And he shut it up. And the Bible tells us there in Noah that what? That's where the breath of life was. It is through and by the ark. 
And the ark, we look at it as being a boat out here. It's not a boat. It's Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can save us. If we're looking to go down here to Flanagan and get in the boat, brother, and think that boat's going to take it and take us to the other side, it's not. The only thing that can take us to the other side is Jesus Christ hanging on the cross of Calvary. And thank goodness that he did. I hate that he had to do that. But there had to be a blood sacrifice. The Bible was telling us there has to be a blood sacrifice. They looked all through heaven and looked everywhere. What could be the blood sacrifice? Nothing could do that. Nothing could save us except the Son of God. Because God loved us so much that he gave what? His only. He didn't say one of them. He said he gave his only begotten son, that all who believe in him should not perish, but have what? He didn't say a life uh, eternal for a thousand or life for a thousand years. He said eternal life. So if we die and we're not found in sin, we got Jesus Christ in our life, we're going to die and go to heaven and live forever. It doesn't take for a thousand years or even a million years. He's lived forever. And being with him, our eyes are not the eyes of God, but we need to look at Jesus Christ and understand what his time is. His time, he says, a day is a thousand years and a, and a thousand years is a day. His time is not my time. And my time is not his time. It's going to be on his time because he knocked on my heart's door and I pushed it away. I didn't want Jesus Christ in my life because I enjoyed the world. And if somebody tells you there's not fun in it, there is. To the flesh, there's a lot of fun in the world because it's pretty out there. They put these commercials and put pretty men and women up there and doing these crazy things, and it looks good, right? And it tastes pretty good to the world. But whenever you take an eat of it, you're going to die. Because whenever in the, in the garden, Adam and Eve was there, right? And the Lord told them, said, you need all the trees that are in the garden, but don't eat of the one that is in the midst of the garden. It's outside of the garden. So whenever he's talking about that, all the trees that are in the garden, that are in the church of God, you can eat. If I'm preaching Jesus Christ, him crucified on the cross, it's backed up by the Spirit, you can eat of it because it's right. And if a brother stands up and he preaches, and he preaches Jesus Christ, then you can eat of that tree. But you can't eat of the tree that is out here that's false teaching, that's garbage and trash, that tells you you can do whatever you want, and God loves you. They got that part right. God does love you. But you can't live like that. You have to live for Jesus Christ and him only. And knowing that, what does she do? Eve goes out and gets the apple. That's what we think. You'd say a fruit of the vine or of the tree. we say an apple or a date or something. That's not what she did. She goes out and gets a what? Sin. And she liked it. And she brought it back in to the church who's the leader of the church, who's Adam. And he ate of it too. And he liked it. And what did he do? He destroys the whole church. So if you let sin come in, brother, you may bring it in and it just looks like a little bit of sin. But whenever you add a little bit of water to it, what will it do? It will start growing and it will fester up and it will take the whole, consume the whole church. So whenever sin comes in, we have to cut it off. And we have to know what sin is. We have to understand the word of God because what did Eve do? She, the serpent there, he changed one word, said thou shalt not surely die. And how many of us, can understand the word of God enough to catch that one word. Say, well, I can't. Yes, we can. Through and by the Spirit. The Spirit is not going to back up garbage and trash. It's going to back up what? The word of God. If it's not of the Spirit, not of the Son, it's not of the Father. And if it's of one of them, it's of all three because the Father and the Son are one. And they're one and they're three, but they're all considered, they're all one. Because they, they, they agree on everything. They agreed whenever the Lord saved my soul that Tim needed a Savior. And they agreed whenever Christ came down because he had to be the Savior of the world. Knowing that, he came down knowing that all the things that's going to happen to him and it was preached from the beginning of time and he was in the beginning. Because the Bible tells us, thank God that he tells us that the Word of God walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. Amen. And what is the Word of God is Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. He is the Word. He's the truth and he's the life. And he walked with them in the cool of the day. And they were there with him. But Eve goes on out, right? And I know this gets off of, of Lazarus there, but Lazarus was there and he spoke and what he comes for and said, unloose him. And all the grave clothes, the garbage and trash was taken away from him. But whenever Lazarus came out, he didn't stink, right? He didn't stink of sin. He smelled what? Fresh. Because he was what? Born again. He was there and Jesus Christ raised him from the dead. And if you look at your life, did not you born again and were you not made fresh? It may have been a long time ago and you may be sitting here needing something in your life and that something is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. And without him, you don't have anything. 
We can look around, you might have a lot of money, and that's exactly right. And there's nothing wrong with that, as long as I don't let it interfere with my Lord and Savior. He has to come first. He said he's a jealous God. Nebuchadnezzar, look, he did good. Nebuchadnezzar was there and took Daniel and stuff, and he was prospering until he goes out on the porch or out on the deck or whatever, on the palace there, and he says, look at what all I've done. And then all of a sudden, what happens to him? Destruction. Because he thought he was doing it himself. But he couldn't. He couldn't do it himself. He could only be done through and by Jesus Christ. You think the world is out here? You can live like that. You can go on and do those things. You can eat of the tree that is out in the midst that is not in the garden now. It's not in the garden because there's no sin in the garden. It's out of the garden. We bring it in, right? We bring it into her with our hearts. We bring it into the church. Our church where strong ones can stand up and preach and teach Jesus Christ. But if I have it in my heart to go out here into the world, I'm going to go out here into the world. But the thing about it, I have an unction to do what the Lord wanted me to do because he called me to what? Be saved. And it's an agreement with me and Jesus Christ. And if you're here and you're saved, it's an agreement with you and Jesus Christ knowing that what? If you save me, Lord, I'll be about your business. I'll do what you want me to do. And that's an agreement. You like it or not, but you look in the Word of God. If you take Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you do what He tells you to do. Not what the world tells you to do. Not what me or some conference or some church. I don't believe in, 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 in the church. I don't believe in uh, doctrines and stuff like that. I believe in Jesus Christ. Because I can let my free will Baptist sit over here or my Pentecostal or, or Catholic or whatever. The tradition of God or, or, or the tradition of men are eminently to God. They make the word of God of none effect. Now they are a good tradition, getting together and eating and stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with that. But when I allow what man has set up to take interfere with what the word of God says, it's wrong. It's completely wrong. It ain't a little bit wrong. It's completely wrong. Knowing that I can stand on Jesus Christ, I can stand on the rock, not a rock, of the Lord. Knowing that, I can win through and by victory of Jesus Christ. Because he said, I've done one out over death, hell, and the grave, right? He did. Because why? I've got Jesus Christ in my life. Death has no power over me. Hell has no power over us. And the grave has no power over us. Because the very minute that death finds us, what finds us after that? The Bible tells us the judgment. And if the judgment finds you standing for Christ, you're going to be with him forever and ever. But if he finds you not standing with Jesus Christ, not saved in the blood, you're going to a devil's hell. And that's the way it is. It ain't no false teaching or this or that. It's true forever settled in the word of God or it's false forever never settled in the word of God. And you have to have it upon your heart, Christian, knowing that we can stand boldly. Whenever Christ, where Moses was on the mountain, right? He was up there getting the Ten Commandments. He was there. And the children of Israel, they were already down here in the, in, the, in, the, in the valley. They were already murmuring, you brought us out of here, and we could be back in or, uh, Egypt. We could be back in Egypt. We could be eating and drinking and stuff. They were eating and drinking the wrong thing. They weren't eating and drinking Jesus Christ, the Word of God. They was eating this garbage and false teaching of Egypt. Babylon and all this other garbage. Egypt is a thing. It's a, it's a representation of the world. But they were delivered from the world. But the what? Their hearts started pulling them back. So Moses was up on the mountain there talking to God, and he wanted to see the face of God. And Moses, and the Lord tells him, said, I'll put you in a rock because you can't see the face. Nobody's seen the face of God and live. Right? So he said, I'm going to put you in a cliff of a rock. And that's not like a rock out here, sandstone or something. That's not what he's talking about. The same rock that he put Moses in, he put him in the cliff of the rock, and he covered his face with his hand, right? And we think about it being a, a, a rock cliff out here, like a phone blowing rock or something, and get out there, and he put him under and, and protected him with his hand. The rock that Moses was in was Jesus Christ. He had to be in the rock, because if he can't, he can't see God. The only way that we can see Jesus Christ it's through by the Spirit, and it has to be the only one we see the Father. It's through by Jesus Christ. So if we see one, we see the other. Amen. If we see Christ, we see the Son of God. We see God Himself because they're the same. And so He puts Him in the rock, right? He covers His up, by, or uh, shields Him with His hand. But He's seen the hinder parts of God. I can see what the Lord has done. I can see what the Lord has got in store for me. I can see the hinder parts of God. Look what He's done for all of us. Because he'd already went and sent his son. He said, Christ was there. He said, what else must I do? 
nothing else. Lord, you went to the cross and you are the ultimate sacrifice. And so if that sacrifice is there and there's nothing else to do, this whole thing, whenever Christ was on the cross, what did he say before he gave up the ghost? It is what? It is finished. Amen. It's over with. Amen. And we're looking for these other prophecies. He said there's not going to be other prophecies. There's not going to be other signs except what? The last one was whenever John was in the belly of the fish. And once that's over with, it's done. We're in this four time, I believe it's what, uh, Matthew 13 and 1, I think it is, talks about the four times. I'm not exactly sure if that's where it is, but it talks about the four time, the four time. And the last time is the coming of Christ. And we're in that time because Christ has came, right? He's hung on the cross and gave his life for all of us. And once he comes back, it's over. So today's the day, he tells us, to harden not your heart. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that they can go out and tell somebody about Jesus Christ. And if you look at it, when he's talking about the day, he's not talking about Sunday out here with the sun shining. He's talking about he is the day in the bright and the morning Amen. star. Yes. So the day is Christ and him only. So this whole thing is spirit. He said you have to worship me in spirit and in truth. Not the flesh, but in spirit and truth. So it comes from the beginning of Genesis all the way to Revelation. And all it is is Jesus Christ. And I don't mean it like that, but it's still, it's all Jesus Christ. And the love that he's done, and the love that he shows us, and the love that he has for us, and trying to get us as Christians to hold on and ones that are, that are lost out here in the world, trying to get them to be Christians. Because we have a higher calling, right? He said many are called, but how many are chosen? Few. Few are chosen. But we better be a part of that remnant because you can share your religion throughout the world. You can turn your television on and see religion. They'll have gospel songs and stuff, and I don't understand half of them. I can't understand them because it's worse than the rock music that I heard growing up as far as I'm concerned. But if that's what you like, that's fine. But if it's not based on Jesus Christ, it's wrong no matter what it is. No matter when the music is, or no matter when the preaching is, or no matter when the offerings are taken up, or whatever, if we do the test, sitting there looking at this, say, do in remembrance of me, right? And we take and do the foot washing and the sacrament and stuff, and all that's good. I got called uh, to preach one time at a church, and I was sitting there, and there's a bunch of things like nine or nine or ten or something like that, preachers are. And a boy was sitting with me back there in the back. And he said, won't you go on up and preach? Because they left it up. Everyone wants to preach. I said, I'm not going to. <coughs> well, that's the Lord calls me. I said, they call me by name. And I, put, I said, they call me by name. I'll go up. And all the preachers that was there, who did they call by name? Me. Tim, you want to come up? The Lord showed me. I had to come up. And we was there, and they were going to have the, the a foot washing, sacrament service, whatever you want to call it. And there was a lady sitting a couple rows back. <coughs> And she was safe, and and she, she was testified. Well, I don't feel worthy. She's not worthy to take of this. She is not. But through by Jesus Christ, He makes her worthy that she can do those things. I'm not worthy to get into heaven, but through by Jesus Christ, He makes me worthy that I can because I'm going in on His coattail, the blood that shed on Calvary's cross. So she had the same right to take it a foot washing the sacrament service that I have to get into heaven. But it's nothing that her or I either one did, but it's done by the blood of Jesus Christ, Amen. which makes us what? Sons of God. Ladies and men just like we're all sons of God. And we have to work what? For Jesus Christ. <laughs> Knowing that, we can stand boldly and profess him to this lost and dying generation. Because whenever he sent boys out, the, the apostles, he didn't send everybody to go one way, did he? He broke them up into groups and sent them all four corners of the world to go out and preach and teach Jesus Christ. And as they did, they would go out and tell a handful of people. They would preach maybe to a little town or something or other, and they would listen. Some of them would, and some of them wouldn't. And it's just how it is today. We could set up a tent down here in the middle of New Food City parking lot and have a revival. Some people will come and some people won't. That's just the how it is. But we can't let the people that don't come interfere with our what? Our salvation. We have to stand on Christ. We don't let we can't let the people that do come interfere with our salvation because we have to stand on Jesus Christ. And we all don't always think now that because somebody's in church and they're coming that they all got goodwill because they don't. They don't because Eve was there, right? She goes out and she takes of the world, she takes of this garbage and trash, and she brings it back into the church. 
Now, Eve is the mother of us all, right? That's what the Bible tells us. It's the what? It's the church. She's the church. And so she goes out and brings it in. And Adam eats of it. The church leader eats of it, and he likes it. Adam is a representation of the leader of the church. And he eat of it, the preachers, the pastors, the leaders of the church. And we think about being uh, 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 just on the man's side. But ladies, y'all got a, as much an important role as anybody. It's not one of us, it's all of us combined. Because all of us have to stand and preach Jesus Christ and tell people about Jesus Christ. Well, I wasn't called to preach. All that an evangelist is or a preacher is called to preach the word of Jesus Christ. You're called as a Christian to tell people about Jesus Christ. And that's all we do is tell people about Christ. So don't sit back and say, well, I'm not called to do this. I got a different job. We're all called to do the same job in just different platforms. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because some are called to what? To preach. Some are called to teach. Some are called to sing. And some are called to sit there and pray and be ready and help clean the church or whatever it is. But every job with God is important. Every job. Because without that job being done, somebody has to pick it up. So if I got a hundred pound of psycho feet on my back and I'm going up a hill and Burl comes by and takes 50 pounds off of it, thank you, buddy, it gets a little bit lighter. And then somebody else comes up and takes another uh, 15 or 20 pounds off of it, it gets a lot lighter, right? We can split it up and it's not hard on any of us. But whenever I try to do it all myself because I don't have any help from my congregation or my other Christian brothers and sisters, it gets hard. But thank God we can call on a man named Jesus Christ. And he said his burden was not heavy. He said his burden is what? Is light. Knowing that that burden is light and what I'm going to have to carry. Now it may be hard to deal with sometimes because I allow my fleshly body to interfere with my spiritualness. I allow my flesh to take and come in and tell me that that ain't what it is. But if the Lord, I didn't want to be called to preach. I said, Lord, I'll do what you want me to do, but I don't want to preach. That's double dipping. I, you know, I'll do it, but I don't want to do it. Amen. But whenever he did, brother, I mean, it was hard. Well, I do what you want me to, Lord, but I don't want to preach. Well, you know, I'm, I'm trying to bargain with God. I can't do that. I tried for a while, and it just did not work. Because he won out in the end. And I could either be, what, obedient to the Word of God, or I could take and do my own thing over here and die and go to a devil's hell. And I want to go to heaven with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Knowing those problems and trials are out there, knowing that those things are going to be there, I need to get what's stronger in the Word. I need to make sure that I got all my stuff ready and covered in the blood. All my problems and trials covered in the blood. But if you look at David that I'm getting ready to end here in a minute, maybe if the Lord allows us to. Uh, David was there, right? And he's going out and he's getting ready to go do battle with Goliath. Boy, that's a, that's a good story. That's a great story. So he is there, and Saul does what? Gives him his arm, right? Saul gives David his armor to put on. And so he puts it on, and it just doesn't fit. He said it hadn't been what? Hadn't been tried. It just don't fit. And whenever David does go out to fight with Goliath, he said he comes in the name of the Lord, right? <clears throat> so now think about it. Whenever somebody tries to give you, and we think about it being armor and maul and a helmet and this and that, that's not what he's talking about. If I was giving him We've got to remember on the spiritual side, you go out in this way. You go out like this. He said, no, I'm going out in Jesus Christ. I'm going out in the Lord. And then I can win this victory. So if the brother's up here teaching or preaching, or I'm up here preaching or teaching something different than the Word of God, I'm going out just like David. And I'm not girded. I am not. I don't have my girded on. I don't have my breastplate of righteousness. I don't have my helmet of salvation. I don't have my sword ready to go. And it just don't feel right, does it? But if somebody tells you something contrary to the Word of God, it just don't feel right, does it? Now, Eve, whenever she was there in the garden, and she ate of that, that sin, if you want to look at it being an apple, that's fine, but it's sin. And she ate of it, and it, it should not have tasted good to her because she's a Christian. She should not have tasted good if she's a Christian. And that's how it is in our lives. If I'm out here in the world, and I touch sin, and I let it come into my life, it shouldn't taste good. It should taste awful. It should be bitter in my mouth. and should make my stomach upset, Right? And that's what the Lord tells us. But he tells us that I can also go what? I can drink a little wine for my belly's sake. Now don't think you can go down here to Food City and get a bottle of Mad Dog or something like that. And that's what he's talking about. And it's going to heal your stomach. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the wine of God. Because the first miracle is whenever he was there, right? He was there 
at the wedding supper. And what did he do? Change the water into wine. And it's all spiritual. It's the Holy Spirit. He changed it over. Then the New Testament was in play. And he was there. He said, drink of my wine and you will be healed. So if I drink of the wine of the world, the false teaching of the water that this garbage and trash is out in the world, it should taste bitter and make me sick in my stomach. But whenever I turn to Christ and I eat of this word of God, he should make my belly what? Should heal my sickness. Whether it be financial, physical, spiritual, whatever it is. It may be family problem. It may be cancer. It may be this. It may be that. And we're all going to die. Something's going to take us out. We're going to face death. But thank goodness that if a Christian, I believe that whenever that life's breath leaves our body, that he is there to take me over to the other side. Amen. Because he promised that he would be there. He said, I will never leave you. I will never, ever forsake you. But I will take you what? He didn't say I'll take you part of the way. He said, I'll take you all the way. All the way. And so as we look at it, all the way is with him, right? So if you're here today and you're lost, you need Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you're saved, you need Jesus Christ. There's no separation. We want to separate those things. And a young Christian, somebody gets saved, and they'll be in church, and we say, well, brother, sister, they got saved. Lord, take care of them. That's exactly right. But we as Christians need to help pick them up because it's a struggle getting started. Mm -hmm. And it's a struggle like you've been here a while, brother. Amen. It is. But as a young Christian, and as a Christian, you know, being a little while, we'll sit back and say, well, Lord, take care of it. And he will. But the thing about it, they need to boost sometimes. They need to be set what? And show the way. Because there's other ways out here in the world. But there's only one way, and his name is Jesus Christ. And without somebody giving them a good influence of Christ, they might as well go straight. And it's not only their, not all their fault, but it's our fault too for not being there sometimes. Because the Word of God is forever settled in heaven. And the Word of God is what? Jesus Christ. We all want our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And we look at it, you know, Christ is there and He's going on. We've been doing Revelation. We've been in Revelation. We're just on, on chapter 4, verse 5, I believe it is. We've been in Revelation a year and a half or longer. And then we're only on, we're on chapter 4. Because it gets deep into the Word. And we're just skimming the surface. But whenever you look at this, we know that we can be saved through them by the blood. And we say, the lamb is there, and he looks down, and there's nobody worthy to open the book. But all of a sudden, here comes a lamb, and his name is Jesus Christ. So he's worthy to open the book, right? He's worthy to open the book. And that book, part of it, is the lamb's book of life. And he's worthy to open that. So he opens it up, and we think about our name being written in the lamb's book of life. We think about it as being a scroll book over here or something, and the name's written in it. You know, right here is the Lamb's book of life. It's right here. It's the Word of God. It's Jesus Christ, and it's written right here. That's what will save me. That will what. That's what will take and carry me on the paths of righteousness, not for my sake or anybody else's, but for my Lord and Savior's glory, for Him and Him only. Whereby I must be saved. Y'all pray for me and my family. I will be found doing what we need to do. Pray for our, our community and Christians and everybody. And thank the Lord for saving me. Anybody got anything to say? I want to thank the Lord for saving me.